Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning. This is another day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad. And hallelujah. Glory to God. We would like to. Amen. God, we would like to welcome you to our services emanating from the St. Baptist Church, 200 Locust Street, here in the borough of Roselle on this August 22nd. Glory to God. We invite you to please stand with us as we sing together our opening hymn, number 298, Just a Little Talk with Jesus.
forevermore. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Uh, just a quick aside, sometimes I lose, I, my, my wife and my family will tell you, they joke with me, that I lose, I lose my rhythm a little bit. So when we were singing the opening hymn, I lost my rhythm a little bit, but there's a, there was a man on the post straight ahead of me, and it was Deacon Williams, and, and, and I, I could find my rhythm with Deacon Williams, because Deacon Williams got his hands behind his back, he got his, his feet spread out, and he... <laughs> So I knew, I knew if I followed him, I'd be all right. So thank you, Brother Deacon. Thank you. So we're in for a, a, a special treat at this time. Uh, how many people know it's good, it's good to have a, a good friends? It's good to have good friends. And in order, in order to have friends, you, you must first show yourself what? Friendly. Friendly. That's what the Bible talks about. And uh, Brother Vincent uh, Jeffries here, our, our, our esteemed organist who's played all around the world, he has a good friend by the person of Rick Baylor, I said it right, right? Rick Baylor, and he's going to come and he's going to uh, render a selection, lead a selection for us at this time. He's been here before, so we know him, but we thank him for coming again and leading us in song. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the house of the Lord, singing for the Lord, Brother Rick Baylor. Amen. Good morning, Second Baptist. I'm so glad to be back here. Someone told me we have a church. Rain or shine? Yes. Calm or tempest? God is still God. Amen. 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 We have to take our time with these things and wait on the blessings of the Lord. And I will wait for thee though my youth may change to age I will live for thee for you've written every page of the story of life Lord Yeah. <laughs> 
giveaway um, while the supplies last for Second Baptist uh, youth. Then um, Vacation Bible School, amen, will be taking place for youth of all ages at Union Baptist Church in Kennewa. Pastor James Moore Jr. Um, and Lady Gardia 
so the it will commence Wednesday to Friday, August 25th through the 27th at 6 to 8 p.m. And then we want to also remember Sunday, September 19th, our Sunday school will resume at 9, 9 a.m. And prayerfully, we'll be able to do that in person. And of course, it depends on the way the variant and things are moving. Well, we just believe in God, you know, to cover us by his spirit. Praise God. And then also Saturday, October the 2nd, SBC's Youth Explosion. Stay tuned for further uh, information. And then we have a card uh, to Pastor Moore and the Second Baptist Church family. A uh, thank you to let you know how very much your thoughtfulness meant. This is from the family of our own Marguerite White. Praise God. And so uh, we want to continue to keep them in prayer as well. Praise God. And then we have another save the date. And this is a Juneteenth celebration. It says, let's celebrate our freedom all year long. Yes, yes. A tribute to our journey. Join the positive community on Saturday, October 9th, 2021, for a freedom dinner cruise celebration aboard the Cornucopia Cruise Line Majesty. Oh, that's a lovely name. <laughs> Cornucopia Cruise Line Majesty. Praise God. And so uh, the boarding will begin at 5.30 p.m. Uh, the cruise will take off at 6 p.m. and returning at 10 p.m. This is to honor the churches and the ambassadors that helped with the Juneteenth celebration, right? Remember for the last two years, how we, I know we were involved in Second Baptist, will be one of the churches who will be recognized during this celebration. Praise God. The donation for the cruise is $150. For tickets and information, contact the Friends of New Jersey Legacy Foundation at 908-352-7078 or the Positive Community at 973-223-9200. We will put this, um, this flyer on the board, and I understand from Sister Kim Nesbitt that the tickets are going fast. So um, as much as possible, we wanna make sure that you know some of us are there to represent as Second Baptist will be honored on that day. Um, there are several general reminders ways to remain faithful in our giving. Don't forget our missions, building, and scholarship funds. We can use option one for our giving. Mail in directly to the church at post office box 304, or you can give it to your diaconate member, praise God. Option two, you can drop off your offerings on Sunday mornings between 9 and 10 a.m. at the back door right here in one of our trustees or Deaconess Briggs will be there to uh, accept your offerings. Option three, you can give electronically through the text to give feature from the APLOS website. You simply text give, G-I-V-E, you enter the amount that you choose to, to give uh, to 833-561-0179, then you follow all of the prompts to set up your account. And there are also ways to stay, stay connected with one another. We have our prayer calls Monday to Friday at 5.45 a.m., at 6 p.m., and on Fridays at noon time. The number is 605-475-3215, and you can use the access code pound 916-920. And then, um, of course, we, we mentioned our Sunday school will resume um, on September 19th. Uh, while we are in our in-person worship services, we continue to maintain our social distancing. We will be on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and our conference call at 10 a.m. on Sundays. And then YouTube will have the playback of the services in the afternoon. On Sunday afternoons. Um, 
And then also we want to remember on September 19th, our services will then begin at 10.30 a.m. to accommodate the time for Sunday school, which will be 9 a.m. to 10.15. Also, um, our Bible studies on Tuesday morning at 10.30 a.m. and then also at 7 p.m. via the conference call. You can dial in at 978-990-5000. The access code there is 374-329-POUND. And then for the playback, of the Bible studies is 978-990-5099. And then on Thursday nights, the Young Adult Bible Study at 7.30 p.m. for Pastor Mike via Zoom. And then please note, church family, as our doors are open for limited church services in person, please stay connected for updates through your diaconate and ministry leaders, measures, Maintain. We maintain all of our measures that have been in place to ensure confidential health screening, social distancing, and hygienic practices. We ask that when you're in the service that your mask remain on the entire time, your mouth and your nose as well, um, except with the exception of those at the microphone. And then when they leave the microphone, they'll uh, place their mask back on. Uh, and then um, if you have, there are any needs or concerns, please contact Deacon Joseph, Joseph Williams at 908-245-4717 or Reverend Burley Jones at 973-704-1040 should there be any needs. Amen. I believe that's all for our notices and announcement. But our most important announcement is that Jesus is soon to come and it will pay us to be ready. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 I, I've, I've been forgetting to do something uh, and I don't know how to say it the correct way. But, uh, you know, uh, only you, that's the only part I remember, can prevent <laughs> eternal fire. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Kobe the Christian man said. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. Sorry, Natalia. I don't remember the rest. <laughs> amen. Amen. So it's preaching time. Amen. 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 It's, it's preaching time. Hallelujah. And we have a very capable preacher coming, um, a people person, someone. Uh, what, what I've noticed. Uh, about myself personally is I love basketball. I love video games. I I I, I love um, acting. Uh, but my passion th those are my passion. My passion is people. Like I go out I go out my way for people and I call people randomly um, and check on them. And and Reverend Joanne Williams is a people. She's a people person. Yeah. And she has a passion for people and being uh, a nurse for many many years. It's so good to know that there was a Christian nurse yeah. there that was not only uh, uh, ministering to people physically, but spiritually. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for her and the advice that she's given me when I've had minor health issues and she's, she's encouraged me not to sit on them, right? Like we do, especially, especially men, especially African-American men, they won't go to the doctor and things like that. And she's encouraged me uh, what to do and to do right and to keep my body healthy. And she's gonna encourage us today individually and collectively on how to keep our spirits healthy mm -hmm. and she's going to come before us and when I, when I told her I said I said you, were you a, you were a nurse I couldn't remember if it was a nurse registered nurse a nurse practitioner I couldn't remember she said yes I was a, a registered nurse and then I, I, I when I walked away she called me back she said Reverend Mike I said yeah she said retired <laughs> she's a retired registered nurse so we thank God for retirees and for the time to to be able to spend doing what you want to do after you minister to people so much. And one of the things she obviously wants to do is minister to us through the word. And God has given her that gift. So we thank God for that gift. We thank God for what we're about to hear from God through Reverend Joanne Williams. So I ask that you would raise your right hand in her direction and, and speak after me and say, God bless. God bless. Reverend Joanne. Reverend Joanne. God use. God use. Reverend Joanne. Reverend Joanne. God speak through your woman servant. Reverend Joanne Williams, in 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 After uh, a, a, another selection by Brother Baylor, um, right? Okay. Another selection by Brother Baylor. How do I forget it? Rick? That's me. Rick Baylor. I got it right. All right. I'm off. But by Brother Rick Baylor, accompanied by his dear friend, uh, uh, Vincent Jeffries. The next voice you'll hear will be that of Reverend Joanne Williams. Hear ye her.
but it was a great adventure. Okay. And, and I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And I just felt like the Lord was lifting me up Amen. for this time. Amen. So I'm not used to all these microphones, however. <laughs> and I'm so afraid I'm going to knock something over. But anyhow, let us get started. Um, today is a new beginning. Another opportunity for us to praise God Amen. and to give him glory. Amen. None of us is perfect. There's only one person being, and that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And I really feel that we collectively, um, the country, took our eye off the ball. Mm -hmm. That we thought that we were in control. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now we see what a mess that was. Mm -hmm. And we lost our focus on God. And God has not gone anywhere, but we forgot to keep him front and center. Mm. So let us get back and step with God right here, right now. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning, Father God. I just ask that you hide me behind your cross, Father God, and you come front and center, Father God, and give your people the word that you want them to have. We ask this all in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So I'm not like Reverend Mike with the good eyes. I have to type out what I have to say because I can't read my phone <laughs> unless it's very close to my face. <laughs> so this is me. That's all right. So our, at our 5.45 a.m. Uh, prayer group, one of our prayer warriors always reads Psalm 121. It's a beautiful psalm. It's one that always lifts you up and gives God the glory. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about that psalm today and what it means to us as Christians and to non-believers who are seeking a better way, God's way. Yeah. Psalm 121 is a part of a group of, of psalms called the Psalms of Ascent. And that goes from Psalm 120 to 134. Psalm 121 is a psalm of trust, as is the 23rd psalm. As the psalm, psalmist anticipates his journey, going through the hills of Jerusalem, the psalmist is concerned about the uncertainties that one faces on such a journey. He seeks help, perhaps looking around him, looking within, and then he finally looks up because his help comes from above. Amen. Both nature and a person's very life are God's handiwork. He has the power to aid his people. Psalm 146, verse 6 tells us, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that there is in, which keepeth truth forever. Man's trust is best place in the creator of heaven and earth and the revealer of all truth. And then if we look at the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses one through three. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse two, the same was in the beginning with God. Verse three, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The Bible scholars tell us that this group of psalms of hymns were probably sung by Jewish pilgrims who were making their way to Jerusalem to worship. And they usually went three times a year for their national feast, the Passover, the Pentecost, and the Tabernacle. The pilgrims family made this strenuous journey to the holy city for joyful worship. They could use these psalms as encouragement along the way. It's also possible that once they arrived in Jerusalem, they would sing these songs anew as they drew near the temple, reenacting their journey and affirming God's blessing on their path. Psalm 121 verse one says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills, which cometh my help. <coughs> now we know the psalmist is anticipating his journey through the hills. He may have looked to Mount Moriah, Mount Zion, where the ark of God, the symbol of his presence was, and to whom he looked for assistance and deliverance. Or he looked to heaven, the holy hill of the Lord, and to him 
that dwelleth there. Psalm 3, verse 2, tells us, Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. Now an active believer, the more he is beaten off away from God, either by reprimands of divine guidance or the reproaches of his enemy, the faster hold he will take and the closer will he cleave to him. A child of God is, God is startled at the very thought of despairing of no help. In God. See what God is to his people, what he will be, and what they have found in him is what David found in him. This is what God is to his people. Yeah. One, safety. Mm -hmm. A shield for me, which denotes the advantage of that protection. Mm -hmm. Two, honor. Those whom God owes for his have true honor put upon them. So we are children of the king. Mm -hmm. So we all have honor. And three, joy and deliverance. If in the worst of times, God's people can lift up their heads with joy, knowing that all shall work for good to them that love the Lord. Amen. And it causes your heart to rejoice. And at the end, of Psalm 3, verse 2, it says Selah. If you remember several weeks ago, Reverend Mike preached about Selah. And here it signifies that we should pay attention to that sentence. So anytime you read anything in the Bible and it says Selah after the verse, you should really consider it, think about it, because there's a truth there that God is telling you. The condition of a man's soul is only known by him and God. <clears throat> Others may speculate, but only he or she and God know whether he is right with God or not. So many times it, it's easy to look at another and say that, that he or she isn't saved because they committed a sin. You know how we do. Girl, did you see her? What's she doing in church? I saw her last night down at the bar. Well, my thing is, what were you doing down there? Right? But Lord have mercy. This is, what, this is what we do. You know, we point fingers at one another, and as Pastor tells us, you know, we're pointing the finger, but there's three pointing back at us. So this was the case with those accusing David. They were reminding him of his sin with Bathsheba. They were saying God had not forgiven him. Many today try to bring up sins in a person's life that were already forgotten by God. Yeah. You know, people do that all the time. They can't let it go. Mm -hmm. what, whatever happened, um, happened. And if God has forgiven them, you're also supposed to forgive them. When you are saved, your sins are washed away by the blood of the Lamb. You or anyone else are not to go back and, dra and drag them up again. Only you and God know if, if you were truly repentant or not. No one then or now can judge another. Only God can judge. But we as people have a, an issue because we think we're the judges. And we should not be. The wrath filled with apprehension, our psalmist is still seeking help Perhaps he's looking around and within, and he finally looks up. Mm -hmm. All help comes from above. Yes. Both nature and a person's very life are God's handiwork. He has the power to aid his people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Psalm 146, verse 6 tells us, Which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever. We know that man's trust is best placed in the creator of heaven and earth and yes. the revealer of truth. Mm -hmm. We continue with Psalm 121, verse 1, because it's telling us lifting up of the eyes is a prayer gesture. Okay. So yes. we should really, really go boldly mm -hmm. to God and lift up our eyes yeah. and tell the Lord what's on our minds. Okay. In John 11, verse 41, it tells us, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. 
Now, Jesus' prayer was not really a petition, but thanksgiving to the Father. The reason for the miracle was to authenticate his claims to be the Messiah and Son of God. I see an act of faith also as Mary and Martha had them remove the stone as the Lord had asked. Jesus knew long before he stated to Mary and Martha that this was to happen to glorify the Father. The Father is glorified in the glory of his Son. It pleased the Father when we believe in his Son. Jesus knows that Lazarus' spirit was to come back in his body. When he prayed for Lazarus, it was already as well as done. The prayer here is so that these onlookers will know that Jesus has the power on earth to raise the dead and that his will and the Father's will are done. There's no question that Lazarus was dead. How long was Lazarus dead? Four days. Four days. So this miracle is the one that leaves no doubt that Jesus is God, the Son. The lifting up of the eyes in the prayer gesture is an expression of boldness, as I said. It's confidence in prayer, and it's hope and expectation of the help and salvation that's going to come. In Job 11, verse 15, it says, For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot, yea, Thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. So with cheerfulness and boldness, without spot, you need to have a clear conscience, an unspotted conscience, and be steadfast. You should be strong and comfortable in the assurance of God's favor and shall be settled without any fear of losing your happiness. After Job had driven his iniquity out of his life, then he could look to heaven and to God for help. He reminded Job that if he was steadfast in the Lord, he had nothing to fear. In this life, we're going to go through valleys, but we always have to look up for help and climb back up to the mountaintop. Don't keep looking downward in a cast out fashion. Look up to the hills, for help is on the way. Amen. Let's look at something Jesus had to say about the very same thing in the following verses. And we're gonna look at Luke 21, verses 26 and 28. Verse 26 says, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption is your not. Amen. Amen. This is the speaking of a time when trouble is everywhere you look. Mm -hmm. Seems to me trouble is everywhere we look right now. Yeah. You know, we have the, the pandemic, we have the earthquake in Haiti, we have fires in California, we have people killing one another, so I think we all should be looking up Amen. and praying to our Lord and Savior. Right? So, look up and rejoice. God will come to the rescue. It'll come in his time, I know. not ours. Yes. Psalm 121 verse 2 says, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. My help. The psalmist doesn't look to the creation, but the creator for his help. Yes. Who helps his people out of the hand of all their enemies, out of all their troubles and afflictions, he helps them in the performance of their duty, in the exercise of grace, bearing the cross, fighting the Lord's battles, and on their journeys. He helps them to all blessings, temporal and spiritual, to all needful supplies of grace here and glory hereafter. And this help he gives is quick, present, suitable, seasonable, sufficient, 
and sometimes with and sometimes without means. And they have great encouragement, and you can expect this from God. And since he's able to give it, being the maker of heaven and earth. All right. For what is that he cannot do who made heaven and earth? And besides, he promised to help us. Yes. And he's faithful that he has promised. Oh, yeah. He has laid help on Christ for them, set up a throne of grace oh, yeah. where they may find hope, grace, mercy, oh, yeah. to help them in time of need. Yes, Lord. And they have had past experiences of his help and salvation. Lord, here is Jehovah to add, which made heaven and earth, adds to the same Jehovah the word, and which we read in John 1, 1 to 3. So God is the creator of everything, including all of us. And he's the best help that a person can have. Notice, there's no doubt in the statement. He doesn't say, maybe he'll help me. He says, cometh, which means continue to come. My help continues to come from the Lord. Psalm 121, verse 3. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Now, the Lord keeps the feet of his saints from falling. Yes, yes. He will not suffer them to be moved out of the spiritual estate in which they stand, yes. nor of the foundation and rock of ages of which their feet are set, and their songs established, nor out of the house of God, yes. where they are as pillars, nor out of his ways where he upholds their goings. Moved in some sense as they may be, yet not greatly moved. Their feet may be almost gone and their steps well nigh slipped and yet shall not fall finally and totally or so as to perish. Yeah. Psalm 62 verse two tells us, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Now when it tells us, he that keepeth thee will not slumber, neither angels nor men are the keeper of the saints, mm -hmm. but the Lord himself. Amen. He's the keeper of every individual saint, of every regenerate person, of every one of his sheep, of every member of the church. Yes, Lord. He keeps them by his power, he preserves them by his grace, and he holds them with his right hand. Well, yes. Hallelujah. He guides them by his counsel, keeps their feet from falling, and brings them safe to glory. And a watcher, a watchful keeper he is. Because he doesn't slumber. He keeps you night and day. Less any harm. You know when we have children and they go out at night, we try to stay up. You have the one eye open, <laughs> and maybe you hear the lock when it comes in the door. That's why you hand them over to the Lord, because he doesn't sleep. He's awake all the time. And you can't do it. You can't do it. In Hebrews chapter 13, we read that he will never leave us or forsake us. God is a present help. He's always there to help us, nice. night and day. Yes. If you're standing on that rock that cannot be moved, you won't slip. That's right. The great shepherd never sleeps or lets the wolves come in and get where you are, yes. right? He'll be with us until the end of the earth. Yes. Psalm 121, verse 4. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. This just doesn't mean the physical Israel who was, who was in God's presence continually on the way to the promised land. But it's talking about the spiritual Israel also, the Christians who are on their journey to the promised land. God is with his own every step of the way. Make sure the journey is completed. The presence, his presence in the wilderness was by the fire by night in the cloud by day. Yes, Lord. 
The presence with the believer now is the Holy Spirit, which is our comforter and our God. He will guide us to eternal life in heaven, our promised land. Now, when looking at verses 5 and 6, these pilgrims are traveling across this arid desert towards their city, and their greatest fear of danger is exposure to the elements, and particularly the heat, because they could be scorched if they don't find shade. So verse 5 tells us, the Lord is thy keeper. Yes. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord is thy preserver, thy defender. He will keep time from danger. He will keep thee from sin. He will keep thee unto salvation. The Lord is thy shade. The Lord is as a shadow, as a shadow of a rock, a house, or a tree, in the intense rays of the burning sun. He's all covered. Isaiah 25 verse 4 tells us, For thou has been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. So we're looking at the poor and the needy. Another indicator of God's worthiness to be glorified is his upholding of the oppressed. God always is a help to those that we would call underprivileged. God expects all of his followers to help the widows, the orphans, to help those that are homeless, so that no one goes without. Mm -hmm. So you can really tell those who are believers, because those are the ones who are helping. So if those cannot help themselves, and you can number them, you should be the one out there. Don't walk by. Yeah. Don't not look. Yeah. Don't step over them. Yeah. They need your help. Yeah, that's and that's what the Lord expects us to do. Amen. That's why we're here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To be his disciples. Amen. Jesus said, Inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, you have done it oh. unto me. Yes. Upon thy right hand. It says in verse 5, partly to uphold the right hand, which is the chief instrument of action, and partly to defend thee in that place where thy enemies oppose thee. This represents the place of human need. The promise is that the evil one cannot snatch you away from God. That's right. Ooh. He is our keeper. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. The Gospel of John. Chapter 10, verses 28 and 29. Yes. 28 states, And I give unto them eternal life, yes. and they shall never perish. Yes. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Yes. Verse 29. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of the Father's hand. Yes. The shade that we're talking about here means a protector from harm. Yes. The right hand mm -hmm. always has to do with the spirit. Oh, yeah. So we have to raise our right hand. Yes. Yes. This then would be saying that God himself protects the spirit of his followers. Yes. Psalm 121 verse 6. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Yes. With its rays, which it shoots forth like darts, and which flies swiftly, they pierce and hurt. Mm -hmm. It almost gives you a picture of the Greek god Apollo, who used bows and arrows. Mm -hmm. Well, the same is with this sunlight. Yes. It seems to attack you if you're out there and you have no covering. Yes. The Septuagint version, which is the Greek version of the Jewish scriptures, says, the sun shall not burn thee by day, nor the moon by night. And burning may be ascribed to the cold, frosty air yes. in a moonlight night mm -hmm. as the north wind. You know, if you've been to Chicago, you've met the yeah. wind. <laughs> so, and then the words, by day, by night. That means around-the-clock protection mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry. 
The key word here is smite. Yes. Smite means to strike you lightly or severely. Day and night, God is our protector. Yes. All right. The elements of nature would cooperate with the believer and not be harmful to them. Yes. Just as the spirit of God was with physical Israel, yes. he'll be with and protect spiritual Israel, the Christians. Mm -hmm. Now in Proverbs verses seven and eight, God's care includes his limitless ability to preserve believers from all evil, and extends not just to all settings of life, but for all time, both now and forevermore. Yes. Going out and coming in. Yes. This is an idiom that speaks to the regular routines of life. Mm -hmm. While this seems to have a, a temporal sense at first glance, there are indications that it looks beyond to eternal life. So we're talking about evil now in verse 7. All right. So, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Yes. He shall preserve thy soul. John 17, verse 12 tells us, this is Jesus talking, mm -hmm. while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Yes. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I kept them in your name. Jesus protected them and kept them safe from the world, as he said. And he said this to us in John 6, verses 37 to 40, and then verse 44. Verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. Yes. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Verse 38, for I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, yes. but the will of him that sent me. Yes. Verse 39, and this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Verse 40, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, yes. and I will raise him up at the last day. Another example of this can also be seen in the Gospel of John in chapter 18, verses 1 to 11. Verse 1 says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. Verse 2. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither of the disciples. Verse three, Judas then, having received a band of men and office, officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Verse four, Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Verse 6. As soon then as he said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Verse 7. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 8, Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Verse 9, that they saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Verse 10, then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it 
and smote the high priest's servants and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Verse 11. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? So we see here believers are secure because they are held by Christ and by God. Now in John 10, 28, 29, it says, And I give unto them, this is Jesus speaking, eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. The security of Jesus' sheep rests with him as a good shepherd. He has all the power to keep them safe. So he has all the power to keep you safe. Neither thieves and robbers nor wolf can harm them. Verse 29 makes it clear that the Father ultimately stands behind the sheep's security. For nobody is able to steal from God who is in sovereign control over every single thing. He shall preserve thy soul. He preserves the bodies of his people, oftentimes from diseases, disasters, from death, till the appointed time comes. And then he preserves their dust in the grave and raises it up on the last day. But more especially, their souls the redemption and salvation of which he undertook and has effected, and which are preserved by him safe to his coming, kingdom and glory. Verse 8. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The Lord will preserve you going out, coming in from all places, home, work, everywhere, all the time, through this life and forever. This is the gracious assurance that we have, which is made to all who put their trust in God, at home and abroad, in field, by the way, on the land, on the ocean, in native countries, in remote climates, on earth, in the grave, and the eternal world. We're always safe. No evil that will endanger their salvation can befall them. Nothing can happen to them here but what God shall see to be beneficial to their ultimate good. And the heavenly world, they shall be safe there forever from every kind of evil because there's no sin there. And therefore, no need of discipline to prepare them for a future. Evil may be all around you, but the Lord will build a hedge around you. Amen. Psalm 91, verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Just as the Lord made a separation from the firstborn of Egypt and the firstborn of the Hebrews, he will make a separation for us as well. Amen. And preserve means to keep. The sum total of this is that he's going to keep our souls. Amen. So now, since we found out about God's sustaining power mm -hmm. and what he can do, I'd like all of us to repeat the 23rd Psalm. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.
now it comes to the time in the service where if there's anyone here or at home who is not saved, this is your opportunity to come under God's umbrella, to come into the safety of his arms. Because we know it's not safe anyplace else. So you need the Lord. You need him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come to you, Father God. All of those, Lord, who are at home or here in the sanctuary who are not saved, Lord, we're praying, Lord, that they're turning their lives over to you, that they're admitting, Lord, that they're sinners, Lord, and cannot do without you, Father God, and that they believe that you are the great I am, that you are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you are, Father, what they need, Father God. So, Father, as we come before you, Father God, we thank you, Father God, and we bless your holy name. So, Father, we thank you for all that we've heard today, Father yes, God. God. We thank you for all we have seen. Yes, God. And we pray, Father, that it's been implanted on our hearts. Yes. So now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, Sent you forth us before the throne of grace, be glory and honor, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And all God's children sang. <laughs> 